Hi everyone, welcome back to our MIST A Driven SD1 Configuration Guide series of videos. My name is Shai Donovich, I'm a solution architect here at Juniper on the MIST A Driven Enterprise team. And this is going to be section 8 of part 2, uh, device onboarding using a full zero touch provisioning method. Uh, if you recall in section 2, I covered uh, the other method we have under MIST to uh, onboard device uh, and assign them to sites, which is an adopted device. Uh, essentially using a short uh, configuration uh, commands to create uh, outbound SSH to miss cloud. Um, and since I'm using a VSRX in my lab uh, and a VSRX does not come out of the box with the default config, including phone home client, I first uh, showed you how you um, can adopt uh, VSRX uh, and onboard them to, uh, uh, to miss cloud. But here I also want to cover now uh, a physical device, um, how uh, a ZTP process works, um, and uh, how you would uh, use a claim code uh, in order to uh, ZTP physical devices uh, to sites. Um, I'll be using an SRX380 uh, uh, for that demonstration, uh, but we have uh, a full variety of branch SRX devices that are actually supported uh, under MIST Cloud as part of our solution. So with that, uh, let's get started. Okay, so uh, so far uh, we have onboarded three spokes, site one, site two, site three, uh, in a single hub, uh, all using VSRXs because this is uh, my lab setup. Um, and uh, we also have uh, two LAN segments uh, in each site, LAN zero and LAN one. Uh, if you haven't uh, watched the previous uh, sections in uh, part two, I, I encourage you to go back and watch the uh, previous sections as I go uh, step by step on how you would onboard uh, VSRX using the adopt method um, and, um, and also configure the LAN segments and we know with the different use cases, source not, etc. Uh, but in this section, I want to add an additional site. Uh, we'll add site 11. Uh, and in site 11, uh, it's actually going to be the same as other sites, but we will be using a physical device, SRX380, uh, uh, in this case. Um, and um, as every uh, branch SRX, uh, also SRX380, uh, comes from a factory, uh, from the factory with uh, a claim code imprinted uh, on the device, uh, usually a sticker that is uh, found in the front end of the device or uh, on the back side of the device. Uh, it is a, a short code uh, that uh, you will use in order to um, claim the device uh, on uh, the MIST portal and assign this device to a specific uh, site. Once the device is onboarded, uh, this device as well will create uh, two IPsec tunnels uh, to hub A, uh, the same as we have uh, under site one, two, and three. Uh, so essentially, again, each site that you onboard uh, creates two IPsec tunnels uh, going uh, from spoke, uh, in our case, uh, to hub A. If you have obviously two hubs, it would go to uh, two hubs, but as I mentioned, uh, just for the purpose of uh, these uh, series of videos, uh, we're going to be using uh, one single hub, uh, but in general, you know, you, will, you would probably have two hubs. Okay, so if uh, we take a look at uh, the ZTP workflow, um, here's our SRX380 uh, that we'll be using for uh, this uh, site 11. Uh, and you would uh, first need to locate the claim code uh, that, as I mentioned, imprinted on the front panel of the device, usually a small sticker uh, with the claim code um, on, uh, on the sticker. And what you would do is, uh, under the inventory page, uh, under MIST UI, uh, you would have an option to click on uh, claim device or uh, claim device to site. Uh, essentially, the screen would look uh, like this, uh, pretty simple. You would enter your claim code. Uh, you also have an option to uh, select assign uh, the device once the device is ZTP'd. You would have an option to say, okay, well, automatically assign the device to a specific site. Uh, you can also generate uh, a name uh, of the uh, device uh, once assigned to the site. Uh, in this case, I'll be using uh, site-11 underscore SRX380, uh, just so we can um, identify easily the site uh, that has a physical device. Uh, and similarly to uh, adopt device to site, uh, we'll have an option to uh, set our uh, root password or use the root password that is actually configured under uh, the site settings. Once uh, you click on claim, uh, it would go ahead and um, uh, communicate with the MIST cloud. 
uh, and the device would be assigned and uh, ZTP'd uh, to the site. If we look at uh, the SRX uh, 380, uh, we have two set of uh, ports here. There's a one gigabit Ethernet port, PoE Plus, uh, and we also have a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, SFP Plus ports. Um, I wanted to show you uh, both um, ways uh, to use uh, either the one gigabit Ethernet ports as your WAN links, WAN 0 and WAN 1, uh, but also uh, the 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning this is because uh, the SRX 380 comes uh, with a default factory default config, uh, which has uh, G000, which is the first port on the left side uh, under one gigabit Ethernet ports, is configured as DHCP client. In other words, uh, if you connect this port uh, in your branch, uh, when you know when you set up a new branch, as an example, if you connect it to your uh, service provider and, and you have a DHCP uh, lease uh, that is being handled. Uh, over from your service provider equipment, then G000 will uh, will get an IP. Uh, but if you choose to have uh, a larger branch and you would use a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, interfaces, uh, XE0019, which is the last interface in this box, is also configured as a DHCP client. Uh, so we'll use uh, both methods. Um, in fact, I'll use one SRX 380 to ZTP using one gigabit Ethernet ports uh, to site 11. And then we also use uh, uh, site 12 uh, and ZTP an additional uh, SRX 380 uh, into site 12, as I'll show you uh, in, the next, uh, in the next few slides. So to start with, uh, here's an example. Uh, if we use uh, G000 uh, as our um, as our uh, branch device, um, it would get an IP. Uh, and then uh, once uh, the box has an IP, um, the factory default config will include a phone home client that will reach out uh, to a redirect server, which will be redirected to a specific MIS cloud. Uh, termination point uh, that will be actually uh, pushing the config uh, back to the device. And here is uh, an, a, another option that I mentioned. If you choose to use a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, ports as your uh, as your as your uh, service provider um, uh, connectivity, uh, then uh, XE0019 would actually also receive or are is able to receive a DHCP lease from your service provider using the factory default config that the box comes uh, with. And then again, communicate with the Miss Cloud and the onboarding process and the ZTP process will, uh, uh, will complete. Okay, so let's then uh, use uh, Site11 uh, to ZTP this SRX uh, 380 using the one gigabit ethernet interfaces. Um, and again, you know, what we'll need to do is uh, we first uh, need to create Site11. We'll just uh, go ahead and clone um, site three or one of the site uh, to site 11 as we have previously done with other sites. And then we assign uh, the spokes, uh, one edge template name spokes to, um, to site 11 as well. So we'll have uh, the same config uh, because essentially uh, the, the SRX 380 uh, will use the same uh, port configuration as we used on the VSRXs. Um, uh, that means that uh, G000 will be our WAN uh, 0 and uh, WAN 1. And then uh, our LAN 0 and LAN 1 would be G002 and G003. So since the port uh, are the same and uh, the config uh, is the same, the so Juno SRX, so everything is the same here. And so uh, this is why uh, we can actually use the same, uh, the same template uh, for these spokes. So then once uh, the site has been created and we assign that spokes template to the site, we can, uh, as mentioned, go ahead and use uh, the claim code we have on the device uh, and um, uh, claim this device uh, and start the ZTP, uh, the ZTP process. Um, after the process uh, finished, obviously, um, you know, the config will be pushed to the device, including the, uh, the LAN interfaces and LAN segments. Uh, and so, uh, you know, both interfaces, WAN uh, 0 and WAN 1, uh, will become active uh, towards, uh, towards the internet and towards the, um, and, you know, using the overlay uh, IPsec tunnels. So again, just a quick reminder on uh, how uh, we create sites. 
um, uh, we can clone one of the sites, just give it a name uh, and, the, um, and the location uh, as the two minimum uh, configurations. And also we would need to change the variables um, to reflect that this is uh, site 11. And then uh, once the site has been created, we can uh, navigate to our uh, OneEdge uh, template, spokes template, and select site 11 uh, as well uh, to be assigned to this uh, template. And then again, uh, we can navigate under the inventory page, uh, click on claim, enter our claim code, uh, and uh, select managed by mist which is essentially gonna also use uh, the root password that we have uh, configured under the site settings. And once uh, uh, the ZTP process uh, will finish, we will see the device uh, under the inventory page, site 11 underscore SRX 380. Uh, that's the name that I will give this uh, device uh, in site 11, as you can see here. And so once the ZTP is complete, we'll be able to uh, uh, go uh, and select the device uh, under uh, Site 11, and we'll see the front panel of uh, the SRX380 uh, with the four interfaces according to uh, uh, the diagram 1011 and the two LAN interfaces uh, and you know the WAN Edge uh, Insight page and so on. So now let's uh, quickly jump uh, to the MIST UI and I'll show you how to uh, configure this uh, and then uh, check connectivity uh, from the device itself as well. Okay, so let's uh, first go ahead uh, and create uh, site 11, uh, navigate to our uh, site configuration uh, and then let's pick up uh, site three. We can go ahead and click on clone site uh, okay, and then uh, give the site a name. We want to name it uh, site 11, and we're going to set our location, which is, you know, again, my lab is the same location. And one thing we want to do is we want to update uh, the site uh, variables here. So if uh, we will uh, scroll down to site variables, uh, here is uh, where we want to update the value for 11 because this is going to be used uh, to set the uh, LAN segments uh, as you recall from uh, previous uh, sections. Um, click on save. Uh, uh, the LAN 0 mask uh, and LAN 1 mask is actually going to be the same so uh, we only need to uh, change this uh, variable here. Um, and then we can uh, go ahead and scroll up and click on save uh, to save this uh, site 11. And as we can see, site 11 here uh, has been created. And so the next thing uh, we want to assign uh, the same spokes uh, template to site 11. Uh, we can navigate to our one edge templates, click on our spoke template. And as of now, we can see it says uh, three sites uh, with three WAN edge uh, devices. Click on assign uh, to sites. And here's where we can select uh, our newly created site, which is site 11. Click on apply. And now we basically have uh, four sites that this same template is assigned to them. Uh, and again, you know, since in the, this case, uh, our SRX380 will be uh, using G000 and G001 as WEN0 and WEN1, uh, we can uh, go ahead and use the same template as we have used for our VSRX devices. So next, uh, we're going to go ahead and navigate to our inventory page. Uh, we can see our four devices, uh, the three VSRXs, site 1, 2, 3. And here is on the top uh, right hand side, we have those uh, two options to uh, onboard devices as mentioned, adopt uh, one edge device. This is where you would uh, copy the uh, uh, Alban SSH config that we have done uh, in previous uh, sections uh, when onboarding the VSRXs. Uh, but here on the left hand side, there is a claim one edge device, which is essentially using a full ZTP uh, process using a claim code uh, for physical VSRX. So you click on uh, claim one edge device and we can go ahead and uh, enter our claim code, click on add 
and then uh, we wanted to uh, assign the device automatically to uh, the newly created site so we'll pick up uh, site 11 from this list here and we can also generate uh, the name uh, the host name uh, for this device and we wanted to call it uh, site 11 underscore SRX uh, 380 uh, just so we can uh, identify this uh, device uh, which is different from the VSRXs and we'll select the manage configuration with MIST um, and um, you know we have this uh, root password that we have uh, already assigned in our site settings and so now we can go ahead and uh, click on claim but uh, before we do that, uh, let's quickly uh, look at the uh, device, the factory default configuration uh, to verify that we have connectivity and um, you know we have uh, an IP that has been uh, uh, handed uh, by the uh, DHCP server. So here's uh, our uh, SRX380 uh, device console. Um, and if I try to log in with uh, root as a user, you see there's uh, no password, which means uh, the device is uh, in, a, in a factory default uh, state, either uh, after zeroizing the device uh, or um, out of the box. That's, uh, that's how the, uh, the config actually on the device. So if we uh, go ahead and look at our uh, interfaces, um, and we can match on uh, DHCP, you can see that uh, there are two interfaces which are configured as a DHCP uh, client. Uh, this is the first interface of the box, as, uh, as I mentioned, GE000. And also the last interface on the box, which is the XE0019, which is a 10 gig interface. Uh, but for now, uh, for this use case, we're going to be ZTPing this device to site 11 using uh, the gigabit Ethernet interfaces. So um, we would accept, uh, we would expect to have uh, IP on G000. So if we, uh, I'm gonna go and uh, take a look at our um, route table. We can see we have uh, default uh, pointing uh, to uh, site 11, which is uh, 10.11.02. Uh, and uh, it's pointing to uh, 101 uh, as our uh, gateway. And we can just uh, quickly check uh, connectivity, as we always do to make sure we can ZTP the device. And uh, also we can go ahead and do, uh, uh, to make uh, ping google.com uh, to make sure we have uh, DNS resolution as well. And so we're going to be ready to uh, ZTP this uh, this device. Also, just a quick note on uh, the redirect server and the home home phone phone home client. Um, if we take a look at our configuration, uh, uh, match phone home. You can see that uh, we have uh, basically phone home server, which is redirect.juniper.net. Uh, and this is how the device will reach out first to the redirect server and then will be redirected to the MIST cloud uh, in order to be uh, ZTP'd by the MIST cloud. So now we can uh, go ahead and uh, click on claim. And we'll get a message uh, saying device has been claimed and assigned to the site as well. Click on close. And we can see here the device showing up on uh, under the inventory page. Uh, at this point, it says disconnected uh, because it hasn't been yet. Uh, you know, the config has not been applied yet. It will take a few minutes, uh, and then uh, once the config, uh, the configuration will be pushed uh, by the MIST cloud to the device, uh, we will be able to uh, to see the device turns uh, uh, green. Uh, state would be connected and we can uh, navigate to uh, to the device uh, as well. So after a few minutes, uh, uh, the device has been uh, ZTP'd and configured. If we refresh the page, um, we can actually see that uh, device uh, shows up as connected. 
which is online and you can click on the device you will navigate to the device page uh, and here we can see uh, that we have our uh, four interfaces two WAN interfaces and two LAN interfaces and if we click on one edge insights uh, you can see that we have our two IPsec tunnels that are going to hub A uh, and other useful information that we'll cover in the next uh, few uh, videos. And if we quickly uh, switch back to our uh, device console, um, we can also see that we have um, the two IPsec tunnels that are up and, uh, on from this device going to hub A. And if we uh, list our interfaces, uh, we can see that we use G00 for WAN0 and WAN1, G001, and then also uh, G002 as our uh, LAN interface. Um, and by the way, uh, since this is uh, Site 11, we can also see here uh, that we have uh, 10011 uh, to 54. Uh, as our uh, interface address uh, based on the variables that we have uh, configured in previous sections and are uh, part of the uh, configuration template uh, for the spokes. So let's go ahead and uh, onboard an additional SRX380 device uh, to site 12. Um, and again, this is just an example to show um, you know, uh, SRX380 uh, using a 10 uh, gigabit Ethernet interfaces are our uh, WAN interfaces, uh, as I mentioned um, in the previous slides. Um, and again, uh, the LAN interfaces here will remain the same, G002 and 3, uh, and the only difference will be using uh, the 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces as our WAN0 and WAN1, uh, and they're going to be connected um, you know, the same uh, kind of uh, to our uh, two uh, ISPs. Um, and then, um, you know, the same process or the same workflow will exist on claiming the device using a claim code and uh, adopting it, assigning it to uh, site, uh, site 12. And as I've mentioned, um, you know, uh, SRX380 uh, factory default config uh, includes uh, uh, XE0019, uh, the last port as a DHCP client. Uh, so potentially, if you connect it to your service provider and you have a DHCP server that uh, would hand off, uh, hand out uh, um, an IP uh, to to this interface, uh, the device will be able to uh, ZTP with uh, uh, to uh, to the MIST cloud. Um, after the config uh, will be pushed, obviously, uh, we'll be also uh, using WAN one uh, as an additional WAN interface uh, as well. So the first uh, thing we would need to do is uh, we would need to create an additional uh, one edge template um, uh, similarly to the template we currently using uh, which named spokes. Uh, we'll create an additional template by cloning the existing template. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll use um, 10 g dash, uh, dash spokes to identify that this new template uh, is going to be used for our sites that we have uh, a 10 gigabit Ethernet uh, uh, WAN uh, interfaces uh, for you know for 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 some sites. I am missing right, and so um, so again the differences are that we would change WAN zero and WAN one instead of having uh, G zero zero and G zero zero one interfaces will assign uh, XE0019 and 18. Um, and pretty much that's the only difference uh, uh, would be between the two templates. Uh, but again, we would need to, uh, since you can't use uh, variables for the interfaces, we will create a new uh, template um, and uh, we'll name it 10G just to identify that this is a template that is going to be used uh, for sites who has uh, devices with 10 gigabit Ethernet interfaces. Uh, so, uh, similarly to site 11, uh, we'll go ahead and create site 12 by cloning one of the sites and changing the site variables uh, to point to site 12, uh, basically, you know, the, uh, the site number that we are using. And then, uh, once we have site 12 uh, and 10, gig, uh, 10 G spokes template uh, has been created, we will assign this template only to site 12, as you can see here uh, in the picture below. And then uh, once uh, the site is created and we have the template, we can go ahead and uh, create our add uh, our uh, claim code um, under the inventory claim device. 
assign it to site 12. Uh, we'll give it a name uh, to the uh, device site 12 uh, underscore SRX 380-10G just to identify the device again. And the root password is the same as previously, uh, is taken from the site uh, configuration. And once the ZTP process will uh, complete, uh, you'll see the device uh, shows up as uh, connected under inventory and we'll be able to uh, navigate uh, to the site. Uh, if you click on the device, uh, we will see that uh, G002 and 3 are our LAN interfaces and instead of G00 and G001, we'll have our 19 and 18 as our 10 gigabit uh, uh, WAN interfaces. So with that, uh, let's quickly jump to uh, Mist UI and I'll show you how to uh, uh, clone uh, the template uh, and then uh, create a site. Uh, and then uh, I'll speed up the video to uh, uh, ZTP the device uh, to the site as well. Okay, so uh, first thing, let's go ahead and uh, navigate to our uh, one edge templates. And here is um, the template that we have created and uh, we've been using so far, uh, spokes. Um, if I click on this template under uh, more actions, we can clone this template and we'll give it a name, 10G spokes uh, clone. And what we want to do is, as uh, we discussed, we want to change the interfaces instead of uh, G000 and G001. For our WAN0 and WAN1 interface, we'll change it to the 10 gig interfaces. So clicking on G000, and we're going to go ahead and change it to XE0019, which is uh, the first interface. Everything else uh, stays the same. And the same goes for uh, WAN1. I'm going to go ahead and do uh, change it to XE0018 and click on Save. And again, uh, XE0019 uh, by default from a factory default config, uh, it has a DHCP client enabled. So we'll be able to get an IP and ZTP this device. So after we change these two interfaces, we can go ahead and click on Save. And then we can navigate to uh, uh, sites. And we can uh, clone site 11, clicking on clone site. OK. Uh, and we'll name it site 12. Uh, give it a, a location and then click on. Oh, before we click on save, we want to change uh, the variable uh, for the site, which is the site underscore number. Uh, this is here. Uh, so site underscore number would now be equal 12 because we are onboarding site 12 uh, to our setup. And then we can go ahead and click on save. So once uh, site 12 is created, uh, Let's quickly, uh, now we have these two templates, uh, one inch template, uh, 10 gig spokes or 10G spokes and spokes. And under 10G, we can assign uh, only site 12. The other sites are using the other template. As you can see, it says here, uh, spokes. If you click on apply, uh, it would say uh, this uh, template is assigned to one site. Uh, however, we have not yet uh, onboarded any device, this is why one edge devices shows up as zero, right? But but again, now we can see that site 12 is assigned uh, to this template and the other sites are spokes. A hub is actually the hub profile. Um, so once this is assigned, we can go ahead and click on our inventory, one edge devices, and we can see here we have uh, this SRX 380 that we have previously ZTP'd uh, using the one gig. Uh, interfaces and we can go ahead now and click on claim one edge uh, devices or click uh, claim on one edge and we'll go ahead and uh, enter our claim code I'll click on add and we want to assign this device to site 12 uh, and we let's go ahead also and generate uh, uh, the host name for this device so uh, site 12 underscore srx uh, 380 um, then you want to name it uh, uh, 10G, just so we know that this is uh, using uh, the 10 uh, gigabit Ethernet interfaces. 
And once we're happy with that, we can click on claim. Message, message uh, saying uh, the device has been claimed successfully and it is now shows up under inventory uh, as disconnected. Uh, but in a few minutes, uh, once the device will reach out uh, to our phone, uh, to our uh, redirect server and then to Miss Cloud, it will be ZTP'd and the config will be pushed to the device. And after a few minutes, uh, we can go ahead and uh, refresh this uh, inventory page. Uh, and as we can see, now the device shows uh, connected. Here's our site 12. Uh, and we can navigate to the site. Uh, and here's, uh, we see our uh, XE19 uh, and 18, uh, which are uh, 1, 0, and 1, 1 interfaces and the two LAN interfaces uh, that we have uh, so far. Uh, for the two use cases. And if we uh, quickly switch to our uh, device console here, uh, we can see that uh, the prompt has changed to uh, the name uh, we have assigned to the site, site12SRX380-10G. Uh, and if we uh, look at our uh, route table, we can also see that uh, our default route now pointing uh, through uh, XE0019 on the 10, uh, 12, 0, 1, and 1 and 1 is 12, uh, 1, 1, 10, 12, 1, 1. Um, and um, also, uh, if we take a look at our hub, we can see that uh, if we list our uh, security IPsec um, tunnels, we can see that now the hub uh, is connected to uh, all uh, five sites, site 1, 2, and 3, and also site 11 and 12 uh, on uh, 1102, 1101, uh, meaning two uh, IPsec tunnels uh, to each uh, site. And also, if we take a look at our routing table on the hub, uh, we can see that uh, here's uh, each site uh, advertises uh, the first LAN 0 segment, uh, 1001, 23, 1011, and 10012. And we can also uh, see the um, 192, 168. If you recall, this is the second use case we have uh, covered already uh, for the source NAT, and each site uh, is advertising uh, a unique IP um, that uh, that is being that you know the land one segment is being uh, source nutted. So here are the two new sites we have added: dot one eleven and one ninety two one sixty eight dot one dot twelve. Okay, so then uh, we also added uh, site 12 uh, for the 10 gig interfaces. And again, uh, this site is also uh, connected uh, via the overlay uh, to IPsec overlay tunnels. And so, um, you know, essentially we have added also these uh, two physical devices to our uh, lab setup, uh, the SRX uh, 380s. So in the next uh, segment, we'll uh, continue uh, describing our third use case, which is uh, the static NAT uh, from and to overlay uh, using uh, LAN2. That's going to be our third LAN segment that we'll add. Um, and we'll show you how to configure uh, this use case uh, as well. So with that, uh, see you in the next section. Uh, and thanks for watching.